My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta, and today we're going to be taking a look at Element 3D. Now, Element 3D, you may or may not have heard of. It's a plugin for After Effects uh, made by the folks over at Video Copilot. Uh, Video Copilot's been around for just over, I think, 10 or so years, and they produce a series of different kinds of plugins uh, that have been mostly script based. And Element 3D is a whole giant plugin that really lets me take whole 3D objects and place them directly into After Effects without having to muck about too much with Cinema 4D or 3D Studio Max or some other full 3D program. Um, if you go to the Video Copilot website, you can see they've got tons of different stuff here and they even have different model packs that you can buy with Element 3D. Do you necessarily need them? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I like using a couple of them because it speeds up my workflow for different objects. But more often than not, you're probably just going to be building your own things and working with them in uh, Element 3D. All right. So if you have Element 3D, then you should know how to install it. In I have a lot of people who have maybe bought Element 3D that maybe don't understand exactly how it works. So what we're looking at right now is I just have a, a pyramid that I've put onto this, this disco kind of platform with a little bit of reflection. And I've got some particles in the background here. And in fact, if I turn on some of my other adjustment layers here, we can kind of see how I was able to kind of animate this nice little, nice little scene here that I'll probably end up using for a loop or a clip of some type. Now, if this was in a 3D program, if I wanted to change any of these elements, I wouldn't be able to see the full rendered view right away. It would take time to render. That's always been the, one of the drawbacks in using a full 3D program. If this was a full 3D program, I'd have to go back and if I wanted to change anything like the texture or even the size of the cube or some of these lights that are dancing around the floor here, I'd have to re-render all of that out and then wait for it to be completed before I can start animating or doing anything else with it in post. So Element for me is a huge time saver. It's probably the one plugin that I would recommend to uh, most people that are doing uh, VFX work in the real world. So now that I've talked it up quite a bit, let's take a look at it and get started with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new composition and we're just going to call this one element intro. And this is at 12.8 by 7.20. It doesn't necessarily matter, but if you want to follow along, this is what I've got going on here. Now, you'll notice I have my element intro here and I've got nothing on my screen. So that's typically the way we start when we're in After Effects. If I go to my effects and plugins here and I go to the very bottom under Video Copilot, You'll notice I have element and this is an actual effect and because it's an effect I need to put it onto a layer. So let's go ahead and create a new solid. In fact I'm going to create two. The first solid I'm going to create is going to be my background so I'm just going to call that BG here for background and let's just throw on some sort of ramp on here. So ramp Okay, so I've got one layer there. I'm going to go ahead and make a second layer. And the way I'm doing that is I'm just hitting Command-Y, and that's going to bring up my solid settings. If I wanted to, to do that otherwise, I can just go to Layer, New, Solid. And you can see there's my shortcut right there of Command-Y. And I'm going to call this one Element. And the reason why I'm naming them this way is so that way I can find them a little bit easier. And I'm just changing that color so that way they're going to be visibly different colors in here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to my effect, Video Copilot element, and drag that on there. And the first thing you're going to notice is that it disappears. The way that element works is very similar to, say, Red Giant's plugin like Particular or even Plexus, where it creates its own 3D geometry. It has its own 3D world. So even though this isn't a 3D layer, isn't switched on. It actually has its own 3D geometry. So the very first thing I do when I start with Element is I jump right into the scene setup and that's that button right up in here in the effect controls. 
Now, as soon as I click on that button, it's going to go ahead and it's going to open the Element 3D uh, panel here. So this is the scene setup panel. We're just gonna go ahead and maximize this since this is really what we're gonna be looking at today. So this is where our main focus is going to be. So now that we're in the scene setup from the effect panel, let's take a quick little tour of the interface here. So the interface is broken up into about five different areas here. So we have our preview panel, we have our presets and scene materials, we have our scene, we have an edit panel, and our model browser. Now, at any time, I can go ahead and rearrange these. So you can see I can go ahead and adjust these just like I could if I was in After Effects or most other programs. And if I completely screwed it up, I can just reset my panels here. So I can also go ahead and pop these off. I'll create a big mess for myself. <clears throat> And now I have no idea exactly where anything is, so I'm just going to go back into Window, Reset Panels Layout. All right. So the very first thing I want to take a look at here is this Preview Panel. This Preview Panel, as I'm clicking and holding the uh, left mouse button here, lets me rotate around my scene in 3D space. Now, I love the fact that it actually has a 3D grid. I would love for After Effects to have a bit of 3D grid, uh, a little bit of action like this, much like Motion has, where it's totally going to be flat until you actually move something into 3D, and then it pops up. Beautiful. I really wish After Effects would uh, start including that. Besides the point, let's go ahead and just start creating something. So you'll notice I have a couple buttons on top here. I've got import, and what that's going to let me do is import 3D objects from other programs. So OBJs and Cinema 4D files, C4D files, are natively supported. There may be a few more out there. Uh, you may want to check out Elements help documentation for specific formats, but those are the ones that I end up using, so that's why I mentioned them. Otherwise, we have Element and Extrude. We're not going to talk about these right now. I'm just going to skip over them right now. Go ahead and create a new object. Now, as soon as I hit my Create button, you're going to see this panel open up here. And in this panel, I have some basic objects that I can just get started with Element 3D. I've got a cube, a sphere, a cylinder, a tube, torus, cone, plane, and a bit of a pillbox kind of shape. I think it's an oil tanker is usually what they're referred to as. So just to get started, let's go ahead and pick this cube. And right away, as soon as I pick this cube, you'll notice that it's in my scene. I can rotate around it. I can check it out from the bottom, from the top, just holding on to my left mouse button. Now, what if I get really far away and I have no idea exactly where I am and how to get back to my original viewport. Well, I can go right over here under my preview and to the right of this arrow here, I can reset my view. And that's gonna just plop it right down in the middle again. Pretty useful, I've had to use it a few different times because I'll just get lost in my own scene, but that's beside the point. So right now we're moving around our scene. What if I wanna move my object around and I wanna have several different cubes in here? I can do that just by grabbing onto one of the access arrows here. So this is actually gonna let me move it around this X, Y, and Z space. Now I can actually move around two of them at the same time if I just hover over two of the different planes. So right now I'm over Y and X. So it'll move in the Y and X, but it'll never cross, or Y and Z, but it will never cross the X plane here. Now what if I wanted to rotate or scale this? I can do that too, but what I want to point out is that we have a selection tool here. The selection tool lets me grab the individual object and do things with the individual object. So right now I'm rotating my box model. We're going to get to this panel in a second, but I just want to point out that this is what we're working with right now. And I can rotate this in all of these different ways. And if I click on my scale, I can scale my object in different ways as well. 
So you can see right away, I can do some pretty basic modeling and just get started right away in creating things in Element 3D. Now that's nothing new compared to a lot of other programs that are out there. So let's just go ahead and undo all that. Go back to the beginning here. Bouncing all over the place, there we go. So I've just undid a few times here. I'm gonna go back to my camera selection and let's draw your attention right down here. You'll notice as soon as I create an object, I'm gonna create another object here. We're gonna create a plane this time. It creates another material. The reason why it creates a material is so that way we can see what it is right away. And so we have some sort of reference of where this object is in space. So I've created this plane here I'm just dancing it around, and I'm going to scale up that plane. Something like that. And I'm going to just move my cube here, click on my cube, and raise that above my plane. All right, so if I take a look at this, I should be able to see my cube on top of my plane, and I do. Great. So. Why did I draw your attention down here? Well, let's click on this preset button here. And in presets, you'll notice that I've got a whole lot of materials. Now I have several different options here. I've got bevels, environments, materials, and under materials, I have a few others that you probably don't. Now these are extra add-on packs from, uh, from Video Copilot. And do I recommend them? Uh, if you need something to look a certain way, they're an excellent starting platform. Uh, however, a lot of these you can recreate yourself if you know what you're doing with materials. If you're new to materials, then absolutely. They're a great time saver and they're a great way to deconstruct how these materials are actually made so you can create your own materials a little bit easier. For our purposes here, let's just take a look at our regular materials. Now, I want a chrome floor, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag this chrome right onto my floor here. And let's give this box a gold color. All right, so now it's a nice gold box across this floor. What if now I want to swap these materials? So maybe I want a chrome box and a gold floor. Well, I can do that just as easily by dropping my gold right onto my plane here and dropping my chrome right onto my box. So very quickly and very easily, I'm able to swap out these materials. So pretty awesome. So now that we've created a couple objects and we've applied some materials to them, let's take a look at how Element 3D organizes all these different objects together. And that is in our scene here. You'll notice in our scene, we have our plane model and our box model, pretty self-explanatory. And if I click on either one of these, it's going to highlight that object with its own 3D gizmo. Additionally, we have a group. The way that Element 3D organizes different objects is by group. Now, can I put multiple objects in the same group? Absolutely, I can, I can see that right here. Can I have different groups? Yeah, I can have different groups too. If I create a, another group here, to create another group, all I need to do is click on this Add Group folder. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice it actually makes a subgroup. So I can actually have objects inside of subgroups, and I can even rename any one of these folders. So my plane model, that's pretty self-explanatory. My box is pretty self-explanatory too. This group folder, maybe I want to rename that. So I'm going to double click it and just call it Box and Plane. And right away, I can see there's my box and plane group. Now, just like before, we can move our individual objects and rotate them. We can rotate and move whole groups. Now, this becomes really important because what we can do with something like this is we can create very complex shapes and break them down as if we were rigging a character. So for me, that's extremely useful if I want to build a very complex shape. So I'm just going to undo that here. So I can move subgroups and whole groups just like I just showed you there. Now what if I wanted to have a completely separate group? 
Well, I can do that too. Now I've got two different groups in here. And in this particular group, I'm going to create a sphere. But I don't want this sphere to really be in the same group that this box and plane are on. So I'm going to drag this and put it down here. And now it's in its own group, so to speak. The only difference is it doesn't have this folder. If I really want this folder, now I can do that. Now, I want to draw your attention to over here. These are different group outputs. And we have up to five of them, meaning we can have a whole bunch of different objects and we can put them all in the same bucket, so to speak. And this becomes extremely useful when we're going to be using these groups as particle replicators or for animation. So I just want to highlight this, that we have different groups that we can put them in. So right now I have a group one and a group two. I'm going to put them both in group one. And I just have these two different folders here, right? So let's pull this box on plane out here and get rid of this other one. There's nothing in here. So to get rid of it, I'm just hitting this X button. And now we just have these two. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click OK. And right away, you'll notice I have my box and plane. Great. Now, why don't I see my sphere? Well, maybe I'm going to try clicking on the sphere and hitting OK. And notice it's only showing me my box and plane again, no matter what I do here. So this is why we're going to want separate groups. So if I want this to show up at the same time as my box and plane, but I want them separated in different groups, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this guy over a little bit. The reason why I'm moving him over is because if I don't, he's going to occupy the same space as where that cube is, and he's just not going to be visible. So let's go ahead and rename this guy Sphere. And I'm going to put him in Group 2, and we'll hit OK. And notice now I have my sphere and my box and plane all at the same time. So that is the basics of getting up and running with Element 3D. If you're looking for more information or looking for training in Element 3D, After Effects, or other video production software, I recommend checking out my website, www.stanislawrobertliberta.com, and I have a list of different classes and tutorials available for you. The tutorials are free, the classes run at different intervals, and feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Again, my name is Stanislaw Robert Liberto with AV Ultra, and I hope you found this tutorial useful. I will see you next time.